It's how does fertilizer work? What type of fertilizers are there? And when should fertilizer be used? Right. So there are many different types of fertilizer. There's anything from organic, inorganic, inorganic. There's liquid fertilizer such as compost teas, otherwise just a regular liquid fertilizer. Slow and controlled release fertilizers, um, dry fertilizer, water soluble fertilizer, just to name a few. And that, yeah, literally, that's just to name a handful. There's multiple other different uh, categories of fertilizers that are available and which one can use on their property. Right. So now you always want to make sure you're following the directions. So just because you use the same brand, say you use Uncle Joe's fertilizer, and you for one type you use a cup per four square feet, it doesn't mean that this other type of fertilizer uses the same thing. Many fertilizers of the same brand uses multiple or different recipes per application per bag of fertilizer. Uh, and and just because one cup must be good, three cups must be better. That's not uh, not what we want to do. No. Uh, not at all. Uh, because that can damage the soil structure, damage the plants, and cost you money in which you don't need to spend. So inorganic fertilizers are materials that are mined or synthesized from non-living materials. Um, and so and these nutrients are immediately available to plants. Others are formulated to allow nutrients to be released up over a period of time. So if you use an inorganic fertilizer, choose one with some or all of the, the nutrients in a slow or controlled release form so the plants will be able to take up the fertilizer as it's gradually released. And that's the thing, taking it up as it is needed instead of just dumping it all at once uh, on the plant and then it just absorbs it all and uh, can have... Uh, unnecessary side effects to the plant growth and production of uh, fruit or leaf structure on that matter. So organic fertilizers are ones that are derived from plants and animals. So manure is one of them. Um, organic matter incorporated into the soil before planting will help fertilize your vegetables and plants, but you'll need to add additional fertilizer after planting or throughout the season. And we, we recommend that you follow the package on the back, the, the recipe on the back, the instructions, and it says, you know, apply X amount per at time of planting, and then also X amount of days following the planting, uh, you, you side dress it or top dress it or work it in uh, the soil in order to feed the plant throughout the growing season, because some of these plants, tomatoes, for example, are heavy feeders. They take a lot of nutrients uh, to produce the crop in which we love to eat and uh, harvest and eat. So manure tea or compost tea is made by seeping manure or compost in a barrel of like a barrel or a tub of water. And then you take, um, so you would take like the manure or the uh, organic matter and put it in like a porous bag. Um, and then you let that water seep through and kind of make your tea or seep your, steep your tea. Steep your tea. You can and do this can with take, weeds as well. Yeah. And that can take anywhere from 24 hours to a week depending on what you decide to to how long you let you want it to soak how much you're making etc now these applications or these procedures of uh, the weed tea or the compost tea you know when you take weeds out of the garden throw on a tote and let them steep this is not something you want to do in an enclosed uh no area you want to do this um in your you know in the backyard somewhere it does Whatever. smell. Oh, yes. Um, when we made weed tea a couple of years ago, and it had the same aroma, uh, that may not be the correct word, the same stench, let's put it that way, as a cattle lot because yeah. of the, uh, it wasn't oxidized. It wasn't, it was just steeping there. It wasn't right. being mixed. It's It stunk pretty bad. Yeah. So but uh, it was very healthy for our plants. Yeah. It, and, and you're not utilizing your pocketbook. You're, you're using things that you already have available on your property. We all have weeds. We can put them in a tub and steep them and then utilize that nutrient, which is that comes off those plants and water your, your seedlings with, uh, your starts with outside or as the plants are maturing. For sure. So that, that definitely is um, an excellent option as well. And water-soluble fertilizers are quick boosts for vegetables, so it would be like liquid or crystals. Which and is then, a good thing is if you are seeing a deficiency in, uh, in a form uh, a deficiency somewhere in which it's lacking of nitrogen or it, it's yellowing and 
you can identify that that's being the nutrients that is uh, lacking in the plant uptake. You can instantly boost it with a uh, with a liquid fertilizer. And then there's a f- foliar feed, which is spraying the plants with a diluted liquid fertilizer. And this is actually spraying the leaves themselves. It's uh, usually not a regular maintenance thing. A lot of times it's something if you have want to give your plants a special boost or you're trying to help assist them with some sort of deficiency they may be having. And anytime you do a foliar feed, uh, it's recommended, and if you can use a a Chapin uh, pump sprayer, the finer the mist that goes in the leaf, the easier the plant is to absorb that moisture into the leaf structure. Do Do you need fertilizer? It depends on your growing situation. So if you have a... Um, a raised bed you've had for a couple of years, you could, I'm sure a lot of the compost there has settled, or the soil, whatever you're growing in, you could just add more soil, right. and that will give it a boost. If you have soil that needs replenishing, that you're planting in the ground, definitely something you could give it a boost with, with fertilizer. You kind of have to assess that on your own. Well, with a raised bed, uh, even if you have good compost and you've top-dressed it, if you're using an organic fertilizer, it's not going to overpower the plant. The plant will only pick up what it needs to use right. and what's available. Uh, real quickly, let's talk about what the three numbers on the bag is because we've talked about nitri- we, we've talked about you know adding the fertilizer, but understanding what the bag is informing us of is is crucially important to this whole procedure. Yes. So there's three numbers three main numbers on the back of any or on the front too of any fertilizer bag and the first one so it's three numbers it's npk n is nitrogen p is um uh, phosphorus and k is potassium and 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 it can also be potash Potash. Uh, that term is is loose as well but it's the same same uh nutrient there and whether you're listening to our show in quebec canada australia iran russia it's th- those three are the same universally. Those with those three numbers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's what it means anywhere you're at in the world. Uh, those three numbers are represented the same. Right. So nitrogen is going to add the greens to your plants. It's going to add that green color to your plants. Um, phosphorus is good for the root and fruit. Yeah. And then potassium is, is like for all of the, the benefits right. of your plant. Mm-hmm. And people, you know, bananas have the potassium in it, but utilize, use a fertilizer. Don't add, you know, steep a banana peel for several days. The- uh, so, but th- those are the three, uh, wherever you're at. So you can figure out the best, the, the best advice would be if you're lacking or you think you're lacking, you probably are, and you need to get a soil test. Uh, go to your local university website for a small fee that you can figure out how they want the sample to be sent, and they can greatly determine by that test how much you're lacking in certain nutrients and minerals and how you can, or if you're surplused on certain nutrients and minerals, how you can combat that to get a level in which is healthy and productive for your garden because there's no better, no bigger disappointment than to do everything that you're supposed to do. And at the end of the season, you've got small plants small fruit production or sometimes no fruit production in the instance of you've put too much fertilizer on the garden too much nitrogen so you've got these big massive tree-like plants with no fruit because the plant is sucking up all the nitrogen and not use it not able to uh, pick up any of the other nutrients in which is needing to develop the fruit on the plant so keep that in mind as well but yeah do you need be, be aware of when you need to use it Use it sparingly, uh, especially with the liquid fertilizer. Uh, go, you know, quarter to a half of the strength is what of what it's recommended on the back of the package. Just because here's the key: I can always add more, but if I add too much now, I can't reverse the problems in which is has not, been. Especially not during that season. If yeah. You, if you add way too much, you're going to have problems. You're going to either kill the plant or or damage the plant to the point where the plant's going to go in a recovery state and it's not going to have time to produce. So always add more. Uh, what, what is it in, in, in construction? Measure twice, cut once? Right. Yeah, so that's the same thing when it goes to uh, uh, fertilizing the garden. Right. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.